Okay, so this is a review of the 150th scale NZG Volvo EW160C wheeled material handler. Model retails for around 125 US dollars, depending on where you bought it from. Uh, I got this one for 108, and if you want to know where, uh, send me a personal message or write a comment, and I will reply to you and tell you where, because you could get it for 108 with free shipping. So anyway, for 125 bucks, it does seem overpriced because for one it's not a very large model and it, it's not really a average model within the excavator capabilities there's not really a bucket on it so it, it it's not really a model that I guess you could say would appeal to most people for 125 bucks you definitely do not get your money's worth in the size of a model but you do get your money's worth in the build quality of the model and the detail of the model. Th that being said, with the f when it was arriving, I thought it was overpriced. But it's kind of one of those models that after you have it for a week or a month, and you paid 125 bucks for it, it you know it doesn't always constantly be in your head that it's overpriced. So. I, I guess it depends on the person. In a month from now, I'm definitely not going to think it's overpriced, but currently, right now, I do. It is. Or at least for the size, because the detail and the build quality is awesome. So, uh, the model itself has some very cool functions, and one of them includes that the cab raises up. And I think that is awesome. Uh, I believe it's for so it can load trucks. You know, you could see into the truck, or if you got a loader. Uh, a processor or a processing plant or whatever either which way really cool feature it's really awesome I like it a lot uh, front axle with the blade turns a very nice amount outriggers on the back fold down boom raises and lowers and everything uh, the grapple here opens and closes and it turns as well and I'll get to the actual review right now so, the front of it, which has a blade, uh, I, I would have liked it a lot better if it would have had a set of outriggers on the front. And the reason being is because uh, the cab goes so high and the boom and everything, and I don't think you'd be pushing dirt with it. But besides the fact, uh, decent front blade, it's it's just a blade, it's really nothing, uh, nothing crazy. It raises... To that height right there which is a very nice height I gotta say if you do put a bucket on this model uh, very nice height on it it's better than, than uh, most that I've seen out there and then it lowers and it, it lowers very good as well it would, I guess it would take up the where the outriggers height would lower so it raises that low uh, this front piece right here flaps up and it reveals the the cylinders and the linkage now the tires on the model are extremely nice. They remind me identical of those little Lego tires, both in the look of them and how they're they're very nice and they're soft as well as you can tell, uh, and they're not glossy. They they look perfect. Um, very great tires. I think the undercarriage on this model looks very nice, um, and it also has a very good suspension, which I like on both sides. They turn as well to a very nice degree. You know, it it seems like they turn to the right a little bit more. I don't know why, but it just seems like they do. Uh, at least it looks like it as well. The rims, very nice, like you could tell. Uh, I still can't tell. I believe that the, the hub in the middle is plastic and then the rims are metal. I uh, can't confirm that, though. I, I can't tell. Over here, you got your steps to go into the cab. Uh, believe that they're also metal. Some parts you can't really tell if they're metal or not, um, but it has some texture on it. And I like the colors that they did below here. The back axle doesn't turn or anything. Here's the outriggers. They lower down. And the only complaint that I have is the pads are very stiff and they don't want to go level. Obviously, if you push them, you could, but. Raising the machine off the ground is very simple. 
uh, the blade doesn't go as doesn't lower as much as the outriggers but it can support the model with no problem which is a plus and then if you just bring the outriggers down now going to my favorite part which is the cab of the model which is very nice uh... The, I, I think I said this in past reviews I really don't care about the inside of the cab and I don't know if you noticed, but in my reviews, I don't really say too much about the inside of the cab. But uh, it seems to be a, a larger issue with other people. And when I say other people, I mean most of everyone that collects. So inside of the cab is is pretty pretty good, I guess. It's got the steering column, steering wheel controls, all that. Uh, so I guess that's all you guys really want to know. Uh, handrail here is actually metal, which is surprising. I would have thought they would have did plastic, but uh, the mirror is plastic. It got hand rail in the back of the cab, and that's metal. And the warning beacon up top and the little antenna is plastic. And you gotta watch out for that antenna when you raise the cab up, because it, it could smash against the boom. Now, the way that it raises is very simple. It's just two cylinders that uh, push it up, and it extends out, and then it comes back in. And I think that is just completely awesome. I display it with the cab up, and if you have it with the cab up for a while and you put it down, it makes it look like it's uh, pushing its head into its shoulders. It just looks strange when you put it down after you have it up for a while. But the inside of the the cab riser is really not too detailed, as you could tell. Uh, the cab actually rests on that plate right there, but if you come to the back of the cab riser, it is very detailed. Now, my line right here, the line is supposed to tuck into uh, one of the pins, and it would normally be like that, but mine, I keep that to pushing it back in, so I guess my model has a small defect. But it's got the lines, all the electrics, uh, electric lines run to the cab for the controls, and um, it's also got, you can see, the catwalk on the cab, and the two cylinders right here raise it. It's got some cool warning labels right there, I guess, because it's where it moves. And here's what the model looks like when it is raised, and I think that looks extremely cool. Um, but for now, I'm going to lower it. And you can put it in any position that you want. And uh, I actually got to go in a cab that raises and a small Cenobogan. I think it was like an 823. And it doesn't even, it doesn't, I think it was a, a 835 or something like that. It was a little track machine. And... Uh, I also went in, in a Cat 385C with one of these. I didn't go into the 385 with it raised, but it, it's a very cool feature on the real machine, and I'm glad that they actually put it on the model, because I believe it's an aftermarket uh, part that you could add to it, but I guess Volvo adds it at the factory. So I'm going to leave it down for the review. You can tell it, it looks weird once you put it down, after having it up for a little while. The side of the body... Uh, nothing crazy. You, you could barely even tell that those vents are there, but they're there. And the decal. And I have to say, decaling on this model is very nice. Counterweight is uh, very nice as well. Paint is flat, which I like, and it's got the lights and the warning decals. And the right side of the model, which for some reason, I like the right side better when the cab is lowered. The, the cab looks huge on the machine. I guess because the machine is very small. It's not a large machine at all. But uh, here's the right side of it. And you can tell that it's a very nice looking uh, machine from this end. It's got the decals as well. And the steps going over here. These handrails are metal as well. And I'm glad that they're starting to add more metal handrails to models. And I'm also glad that they're very thin. Uh, luckily they're not the, these huge metal handrails. Um, or the, the real thick plastic ones. But the steps to get onto the machine are very nice. They got the anti slip texture. And here's the top of the machine. Uh, I believe the exhaust is plastic, unfortunately. But there's nothing really you could do about it. And there's more vents up top over here. Hydraulic lines running out of the pumps over there. And onto the boom we go. And there really isn't much to say about the booms but uh, the attachment is very cool. So, the boom is, is a three-piece boom. 
Uh, I don't know why they added this boom on to this model, um, but it's there and that's what you get. So uh, it basically has all the functions that it, it, it you would think it does when you look at it. It raises, it lowers, and the stick comes in, and, and the stick comes in, in very far. I like that a lot. And it also comes out very far. The boom lowers that much, raises to a run right there. Uh, depth, it goes to around there. And there's only one complaint I have about the boom. Uh, the attachment only goes back that far. Don't really like that too much. It's it actually doesn't even go back. It almost looks like it just stays level with the stick. But a cool thing about it is it comes in this far. And I'd rather have it come in that far. Because I think it looks cooler when it's in. Than it is out. But anyway. Uh, it has all the hydraulic lines. Like I said. It's got them running to all the cylinders. And a good thing about it is the cylinders match the paint very well. Because obviously the cylinders aren't painted. They're plastic. Um. It's got the lines on the back of the boom, and then if we raise the boom, you can see the rest of them. Um, there's the rest of them. And I'm not, I don't really like to go over the booms too much because there's really nothing to them. Um, and the stick has the warning decal right there. It's got one right there with the warning stripes. And onto the attachment we go, and I think the attachment is is very cool. I like it a lot. Um, now, the uh, another cool thing that they did before I go to the attachment, they added a little lifting high high onto the linkage right there, which is cool. I like that. Uh, it really doesn't do much, but it's a a very nice feature. So the attachment is awesome. I like it a lot. The only thing I wish that they would have did with it was they would have etched out these, but I guess it could like grab material that would normally fall through if it was etched through. Whatever. Um, it opens. There's no actually cylinders to hold it open, but you could tell it it will stay open at any position because the pins. I guess the paint on the pins is thick or whatever it is, but it works perfect. There's no cylinders, but it works perfect. It spins at 360, and I actually had this outside last night because I was taking pictures of it. And ever since I had it outside in the cold for some reason, I guess it contracted and it spins better now. But before it literally, I didn't want to spin it. I spun it a couple of times, but I didn't like to spin it mainly because I felt like it was going to snap right off. And that's why I didn't like to spin it. But it spins perfect now. And it's got lines running to the attachment from the back, which is cool. And all the pins are painted like you, you could tell. So, in conclusion, you can tell the detail on the model is great. Um, personally, um, buying the model, I didn't think the detail would be this great, and I didn't think that it would be this small, but after having it, uh, it's definitely a very nice model. You really can't go wrong with it at all. Um, just a, overall a really great model. Um, I mean, there's, there's really not much more to say. Um, now, there's certain positions that I don't like this model in. Like, I don't really like how it looks like this. For some reason, I don't know. I guess it's because the cab and everything. But it, definitely a nice model from NZG. I guess you could say you get what you pay for. But when you buy this model, you have to understand or expect. You don't get model size, and I guess this is my biggest argument when it comes to this model, is for 125 bucks you definitely get detail and quality, but you don't get size. And when I bought this model, I, I spent the money, and you don't normally hear me say this, but um, about the money, you definitely don't get size for 125 bucks, but you get an extremely, extremely nice little model. And I hope you like this review. If anyone wants to buy one, tell me. I could get you it for 108 bucks with free shipping. I know where to get it from. So, hope you liked it, guys. And uh, check back for more reviews.